Hey guys, it's J19, brought to you in our video, and today we are back with more uh, J19's gaming podcast. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these. If you guys want more J19's gaming podcasts, feel free to like, subscribe if you're new, hit the bell notification so you know if I go live, or upload my next video. So, with that said, let's get a lot of the stuff out of the way. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is, it's massive, it's huge. Um, there was rumors going around, I think late yesterday that there possibly that uh monster hunter rise is going to come to a current gen console other than switch and pc and people say whoa like really like no way but apparently today capcom has just like came out of nowhere and just like just basically just confirmed it like they, there's a trailer out there for the playstation 4 playstation 5 it's coming to xbox one xbox series x and s um, so, uh, this is interesting. This is big, huge news. Apparently, it's coming out, like, early next year. Like, they're talking, like, I think January, I think it was. Like, January is going to be, uh, Monster Hunter Rise, just the base game first. Um, and then they're going to have, like, the, uh, Sunbreak expansion come out, I think, six months later. So, about June-ish or so, they're thinking about having, uh, Sunbreak come out. That's just what I've been hearing. Um, I haven't watched the trailer, but I do own the game on Steam, so this is, like, amazing. Like, a lot of people are, are really super excited about this. It's even coming to Game Pass. That's what I meant to say. Um, I think it's coming to Xbox consoles, but it's coming to Game Pass. So you can basically just fire up the game on your Game Pass. Um, in January, you can start playing it. Like, do I recommend it? Absolutely. Um, I think Monster Hunter Rise on console, I think Switch is fine, but I had a hard time with the controls. But playing on PC was a big, massive upgrade. Like, it was a lot better for me because I can use a controller that fits my hands that I'm comfortable with. Um, but this is huge. Like, Monster Hunter Rise coming to PlayStation, Xbox, Game Pass. Like, whoa. Like, nobody saw this coming. Like, nobody did. Um, it's just, it's awesome, you know? But was that, was that going to leave off with... Uh, was that going to leave off of the, the Monster Hunter game that's supposedly in the works for Monster Hunter Paradise, I think it was? That's like the leaked title name? I don't know if that's coming out um, for next, you know, current gen consoles. Like, that was supposed to be for targeting, like, PC, um, Xbox Series, and the PS5. Like, Capcom really want to make a title, so I'm not sure what's going to happen now. Is that still in the works? Are they just doing this to give people something to do until... They're ready to review the next Monster Hunter game. I don't know what the game plan is, but this is huge. Like, this is exciting. Um, it makes me want to get back to streaming Monster Hunter Rise since um, God of War Ragnarok's playthrough for me is starting to fall off a little bit. I'm just. It's like a 9.5 out of 10. And you guys, if you guys watched my stream last night, just. I started. Like, the last two streams, I started to get, like, a little drained. Like,. The level design was just like, oh, it's like, it's fine. I'm enjoying the story and the lore and stuff. It's just like, it's starting to wear down on me. But like, hopefully it gets better. Um, but enough about that. Let's move on to the next topic. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion is launching in just under two weeks. It comes out Tuesday on the 13th of December. And uh, funny thing is... Apparently, Square has given streamers, a selective few streamers, an early copy of the game. So they've been playing Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion off stream, or you know they're not allowed to stream it. But apparently, Square gave them the go-ahead to show off the very first chapter, which is the opening of Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion, um, which is nuts. Um, Especially when it's like still two weeks out. Like, I wonder why Square would do that. Um, but it's interesting. Interesting to know. Um, a lot of people are speculating. It's like, well, that means if the streamers are having the, uh, are having, you know, the ability to play this game, if there's any kind of changes or nuances or any kind of like hidden secrets, like, it's gonna, it's gonna get spoiled before like the game is officially out. But, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, the devs have confirmed this, and I think they are, like, literally just telling people, it's like, hey, 
We're not changing anything. The events of Crisis Core has happened. Just because Remake is taking a different twist on the ending, it does not change the fact that what happened in the past has happened. Like, you can't change the past. Like, Crisis Core has happened before the start of Remake. So it's like, Crisis Core is not going to change. Um, does that leave out the possibility that it might have, like, a secret ending? Like, maybe a, a, a snippet of, like, what's going on in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? They could. But I don't think the devs are really want to do that. I think they want to save like an actual official trailer, like down the road. Um, to be honest, I'm I'm really excited. I saw like 14 minutes of gameplay. I'm really ha hyped, really excited. If you haven't checked it out, it's on my uh, it's on my channel. Um, I reacted to that and the spoiler-filled trailer that dropped like a few days ago. Like this is it's like I watched that trailer. It's like why are you doing this, Square? Why is he spoiling your game? But it's how they are. They love to spoil their games and just like, hopefully people ain't gonna watch them. Um, I recommend you not watching it if you want to go through Final Fantasy VII and Crisis Core Reunion blind. Um, I of course already knew the ending. I already know kind of what happens. I don't know the full story. So it's like, a lot of them, I'm not gonna watch any more of that trailer. I've seen a couple reruns of that. I'm done. I'm, I'm just gonna let it slide back in my head. I got a lot going on with that. So it's like, a lot of stuff going on in my life. I don't need to like keep rewatching that trailer and get spoiled and keep remembering things. Um, now let's go on to meat and potatoes, right? You guys are probably here for this one. Final Fantasy 16 has got more news, more uh, things, talks swirling around with all the insiders. And Jeff Keighley came out with a Twitter post, and he's really excited. He says we're gonna have a the one and only. Uh, Yoshi P, uh, Niake, Niako, uh, uh, I'm not gonna say it. I butchered his name. Yoshi P. You guys know him. Final Fantasy 14 director. He is the producer for Final Fantasy 16. And he's gonna be there as a special presentation, live event, a live presentation. Um, so that means, that just confirms it, that all this talk about Final Fantasy 16 is gonna have a release date trailer, it's gonna have a release date possibly a pre-orders going live I think this is just like it's basically confirmed because why would Yoshi P be there for like a live special presentation and Jeff Keighley announced him on his Twitter page and by Instagram as well as Final Fan like the producer or I think he called him the director I think he, he messed up he meant to say producer of Final Fantasy 16. He didn't address Yoshi P as like the director of Final Fantasy 14. He said 16. So he's not there for 14. He's there to talk about 16 and present something. Um, a, a friend of mine, I don't really talk to a whole lot to Nice Guy Prince, but even he said in his video, and I kind of kind of agree with him. Why would you do a live presentation if you don't have something major to show? I think. We're gonna have a trailer. We're gonna have the release date. And we'll talk about the release date that's swirling around thanks to the snitch uh, insider for, you guys know him by now. He's, he goes by like the YouTube footages and stuff like that. Like he can crack into the YouTube private videos and stuff like that. I don't know how he does it, but we're not gonna get into his business. But he has talked about Final Fantasy 16 release date and he said in a subtle, very subtle way, and a lot of people are, are thinking it's going to be this release date. Um, but yeah, I think for the live presentation, I do agree with uh, Nice Guy Print. Um, feel free to look him up, um, Nice Guy Print. Uh, he covers a lot of Final Fantasy JRPGs. He's a he's a real nice guy. Um, he's got a great, he's got a pretty big channel. Um, so kudos to him. Shout out to Nice Guy Print uh, in this uh, video. Um, yeah, it's just, I agree with them. I think that they're going to have probably somebody in the backstage playing Final Fantasy 16. And they're going to show us some gameplay footage, like uncut gameplay footage. Like, it's going to be like a live demo. Um, it's a special presentation. I think Final Fantasy 16 is going to be like one of the biggest um, showings on the Game Awards. And uh, it's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. And I think pre orders going to go live because, let's face it, like, we're going to be like six or seven months out until the game comes out. I think it's going to come out in June. And let's talk about the release date, right? Let's talk about it. And uh, 
the snitch, I don't really have his pulse pulled up. But he was talking about like the crystals and the, uh, the six kingdoms and, and you know, just a little subtlety. And he had like, he has some like the 22nd and stuff like that. And um, I got looking up and a lot of people started saying, hey, he just announced like, allegedly, he's saying this game's going to launch June 22nd of 2023. I looked it up. The game would be launching on a Thursday. I think that I think his uh, numbers might be off. I think the game is going to launch on June 23rd, which is on a Friday. That makes much more sense. Um, do games launch on like other any other day? Yeah, look at God of War Ragnarok. It launched on a Wednesday, right? Um, so there has been times where games launch on different days for different reasons. I don't think June 22nd makes sense. I think June 23rd. 2023 on a Friday makes much more sense. And it's just, it further is just confirms that, yes, we're getting like a trailer. I hope that they show us like maybe like a mini boss fight. Like, show us like the, like, the, go through like all the, you know, the combat, you know, tutorial. Maybe they'll, they'll like showcase us like different abilities, like what, what Clive can do, like, like what kind of moves he can pull off, combos. Maybe just a, you know, just a little demonstration. I would not be shocked if we see like just a little tease of a kaiju fight. Like if they both like kaijus go to fight and it like cuts off. Like and it says and it shows Final Fantasy 16 and then bam the release date. It might be just a trailer uh, live demo demo thing. They might just show a trailer afterwards and then do a, a release date. And I think pre-orders gonna go live. I think Jeff Keighley's gonna say pre-orders are now live. You guys can go ahead and pre-order Final Fantasy 16, which launches June 23rd, 2023. And I, I'm excited. I'm really excited for Final Fantasy 16. Uh, it's one of my most anticipated games for 2023. I actually voted for that. And I know Resident Evil 4 Remake's on there too, and I'm really hyped for that too. But Final Fantasy 16, you guys know me. I cover uh, JRPGs, RPGs, that's one of my favorite like genres for video games. Um, I'm, th I'm thinking about like just start focusing on that um, as that aspect of my life. Um, don't get me wrong, I like Sony, PlayStation, first party games. It's just, right now I like, I'm having some like, mm, some feelings about God of War right now. Not the story, I think the story's fine, just that game and the last was part one kind of like just Start off being hype. I was really hype, and just like, yikes! Like, I don't know. I just I need to continue those games and play them, but I'll probably do those off stream. So I'm not no longer streaming God of War Ragnarok on Twitch. Um, that's another gaming uh, news for me. I might update my channel. I'm probably gonna start just focusing on JRPGs, RPGs in general, um, just because I'm just like that's what I'm about, right? I I grew up playing like. Final Fantasy 7, I love Final Fantasy games. I'll probably start like covering those, start making videos about Final Fantasy 7, Crisis Core Reunion. Um, am I gonna stream Final Fantasy Se Crisis Core Reunion? Probably. I'm gonna focus on that. Uh, am I gonna do, I'm gonna do reviews for God of War Ragnarok. I'm gonna finish it up. I'm just gonna play it off stream. I'll finish it up and do a review. Uh, the Last of Us Part 1, you guys see in the back there. Um, I'm gonna Put that in i'm just gonna play off stream and i'll get my like honest review afterwards i think i'm gonna start doing that as far as like final fantasy 16 resident Evil 4 remake i really want to like stream those but we'll see how i we'll see how things go but i think from now on i'm just gonna stream like rpgs jrpgs it just i think i just i found my niche i found what i'm what i'm able to do and i like making videos like this so this is part of my J19's gaming updates for my channel. Um, so I'm gonna start covering just RPGs, JRPGs, um, my, like Monster Hunter. I'm still gonna cover Resident Evil. Is that's like I'm starting to get back into that. Um, I'm a Final Fantasy, of course. Um, whatever, whatever piques my interest. Like even Dragon Quest 12. If we ever start seeing that game, I'm definitely gonna like. You know, talk about that too because I want you know maybe even Kingdom Hearts 4 we'll see um speaking speaking of um since this is a gaming podcast and I want to really want to just uh, cover this as well my prediction 
for the Game Awards. But like, I guess I'll cover probably like RPG of the year, soundtrack of the year, um, probably just the major ones like Game of the Year. So we'll start off with that. For RPG of the year, it's going to have to go to Elder Ring. I know a lot of you guys are uh, really in love with Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 3. I know you, a lot of you are loving that game. And there's a few other games on that list I don't really remember. But I know Elden Ring's on there, and Elden Ring is like one of the biggest games of this year. And no no offense to Xen uh, Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 3. I'm sure it's a fantastic game. I might pick that series up on my Switch and play it. Like, I want to get into other JRPGs and stuff like that and start talking about it. Like, start talking about a different experience on that. Um, soundtrack of the year, that's going to be tough. Um, shoot. You know, Elder Ring's on there. Yeah, I think God of War Ragnarok's on there. Horizon Forbidden West. I'm going to have to go with uh, God of War Ragnarok. I think the soundtrack on that is amazing. Like, just absolutely killing it. Like, I just think that God of War Ragnarok's uh, soundtrack is amazing. I think that's going to win. Um, I think. The Game of the Year Award, that's going to that's gonna come down to these two games. It's come down to God of War Ragnarok and Elden Ring. Now, my feelings aside on both games. Both games are deserving of the Game of the Year Award. And I beat Elden Ring. God of War Ragnarok, I'm getting to the point where it's like, am I liking Elden Ring better? Like... I actually enjoyed Elder Ring other than like being stuck on bosses. Like and it's kinda of the same way with God of War Ragnarok. I'm stuck on some a couple of tough fights. I know skill levels, like I'm struggling more on God of War Ragnarok than I was on Elder Ring. Which is weird. Like So like between before, you know, let's just don't worry about that, about my skill level on both those games. I think in itself God of War Ragnarok's got a fantastic, phenomenal story I'm really immersed with. Elder Ring's got a story that if you dig into it, you dig into the lore like other Souls games. Like, you know what, I gotta be honest, I didn't really do a whole lot of that. I do understand, like, I guess the meaning behind Elder Ring and stuff like that a little bit. Um, so the story of that kind of didn't hit me. Um, the gameplay for both games, like I said, I had some moments where it's like, you know, it's like, I want to just get through this game. Like, why can't I get past this part? Or level design in, in a couple areas of both games. I kind of just, like, drags out. It's just, it hits, it don't hit me as good, right? Now, it comes down to, like, which gameplay do I think is better, right? Wait, what, what, what game do I really think should win game of the year? God of War Ragnarok is one of those games where a lot of people are like, wow, this story is like phenomenal, right? A lot of people love Elden Ring because Dark Souls, let's, let's face it, all, the, Souls, the Souls community is so massive, right? It's, it's like one of the biggest franchises out there, like communities out there. And Elden Ring probably didn't hit a lot of people the same way like Bloodborne did or like Maybe some of the Dark Souls or Sekiro. Um, I still think that Elden Ring should deserve should deserve the nomination. They did. So for me to choose who's gonna win Game of the Year, and I voted for God of War Ragnarok because I was so hyped. I was so you know there's no way God of War Ragnarok will beat Elden Ring. And even though God of War Ragnarok has a better story has better characters. The gameplay is like super sick when you pull off combos. Um, I, I think that Elden Ring, even though the gameplay at the, the customization of gameplay is absolutely phenomenal, but you're basically doing the same stuff, right? So God of War Ragnarok has a little bit of advantage, right? As far as like pulling off sick combos. Now play, like customization play styles, you can't really change your play style in God of War at So, you're stuck. So, I'm going back and forth on this. And I don't want to do this, but I'm going to have to. I have to go with my gut. I know I need to beat God of War right now, but the way I'm feeling right now, I think 
This this is crazy. I think I'm gonna pick Elden Ring to win Go Game of the Year award. I know you guys are probably say, oh, dude, you said God of War Ragnarok's gonna win. You voted for God of War Ragnarok. I did, and I think the story uh, the story has a is, has an advantage over it, right? The characters. I just to me, I'm more frustrated with God of War Ragnarok right now than I am with Elden Ring. Like Elden Ring has some updates that I'm like not really fond of, but I'm very interested in like the DLC. I wanna like go back to streaming Elden Ring by the way. That's like Elden Ring is like an RPG to me. Like I know God of War Ragnarok has a uh, RPG element to it. But for me I think Elden Ring is just like it has an advantage in that. Like with customization and stuff like that. I even think about doing like a bonk a hammer run. Like a, a blunt weapon run. People call it a bonk. Bonk run. And I want to do that. Like, I want to, like... I might I might just do a, a fresh run. Um, or my current character. I might just switch it up and start doing a bonk. Because I think that'd be kind of sick. Do, like, a hammer run. And just do that. Continue the streams of that. It's just, yeah. Anyways. Elden Ring is my uh, Game of the Year uh, winner. Surprising, right? I voted for God of War Ragnarok, but man. Just... Things change, like, within overnight. Sorry, I bumped my mic. But anyways, that's why I think it's going to win Game of the Year. God of War Red Run has probably got the best soundtrack. It's close. RPG is Elder Ring, by far. It's the only one I played. And then, God of War Red Run was voted for me for Game of the Year, but I'm going to I'm gonna have to go with Elder Ring now. I just, I, because I beat Elder Ring, and, and I definitely think that it's deserving of... The game, of the, the game of the year award because of what it done. Like it was an open world game. I really uh, enjoyed it. I, it was an awesome RPG. Just to level up the character, fight enemies. You know, I had some, I had some nitpicks with it, and some stuff I didn't care for. I call it an eight out of ten, but it is what it is. You know, it's just, it's strange. It's just a strange for me to like change the size all of a sudden because. I'm getting to the point now, I, I really like, so, like I said earlier, I really like Sony's uh, first party studios, like I'm still interested in like Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine and like The Last of Us Part 3, but it's getting to the point now I'm like, do I really want to play in more Sony's first party studios or do I want to stick to my guns and find my niche and find what I really love doing because I am big. Like I said, JRPGs and RPGs now. Like, that's my calling. And I just feel it. And it's just... It feels good to talk about, like, some of these favorite... Some of these games I'm really hyped for. Like, Crisis Core Reunion is coming out less than a week. Less than two weeks. Uh, Final Fantasy 16, my most anticipated game. Um, speaking of which, I still want to talk about the Game Awards. My prediction. I think... We're going to get a, uh, other than Final Fantasy 16 live presentation by Yoshi P, which I'm very hyped for. I think Final Fantasy 14 is going to win their two categories, you know, best ongoing game, best, uh, community support. I think that's going to win as well. Now, what do I want to see at the Game Awards? I think we're going to get another look at Silent Hill 2. I think we're going to get a, another look at Dead Space Remake. I think we're going to get a trailer for Resident Evil 4 Remake. And it's going to show off it's gonna show off some areas that we haven't seen yet. And we're going to see Wesker and Krauser. The two characters we have yet to see. And they're like, are, are they in the game? Are they? I, really, I, think, I think the leading up to like the last three months, I think they really want to hype things up a little bit. I think we're gonna get like a little a little teaser for those two or possibly just another look at the game, like different areas like Leanne looking around. Um, I know for a fact we're gonna get Monster Hunter Rise. Um, we're gonna probably get in our trailer and just like just showcase like what the game looks like. Probably have run on PlayStation 5. Um, they're not gonna show like a Game Pass version of the game. They're gonna show like the PlayStation 5, show off what the game's gonna look like. Um, and hope, you know, it's going to look great. It's going to look great. Hopefully it does get the 60 FPS patch. 
um, the 60 FPS, you know, not like that 30. Um, that's going to be great. Great to see that. Now, what kind of surprises can we see? I would not, you know, I would not put it past Sony. I don't think Sony's going to rely on just Final Fantasy 16 for the whole event. Or because God of War, Ragnarok, and Horizon are like big, you know, they're big nominated games. That's, that's big for Sony. And then the last was part one. I think that's the one's uh, best accessibility. I think it's a very a, a very accessible game. I, I think a lot of people are like shocked by like, man, I can play The Last of Us now. This is amazing. This is like epic, so good, you know? And I just feel like, I just feel like that's gonna win. Um, I think we're also gonna get another look at the Paya, uh, another trailer for Mario movie. I think that we could possibly see Sonic the Hedgehog 3 teaser, possibly. I, I, I think this might be too soon, so I, I, I scratch that. Um, we're gonna get some indie titles, we're gonna probably get some like updates on some games. I, I'm not sure what's all out there, so bear with me. Um, I also, I hope, I hope that Square will show off Ever Crisis for at the Game Awards because they do show off mobile games too. And where is Ever Crisis? Like, that's another one I want to see. Like, where's Ever Crisis? I hope they ain't gonna cancel it. I really want to play it. I really want to play, like, Before Crisis and stuff like that. So I hope that's gonna be there. Now, one of the big surprises I can see, and a lot of people are gonna say, dude, there's no way. Well, dude, yes way. Because back when I made videos, and I said this in the past, I said, just because Final Fantasy 16 is number one schedule focus for Square Enix, right? You know, one of the major titles, they got Kingdom Hearts 4. I told you guys, I said, don't put it past Nomura and Katase because we are still celebrating the 25th anniversary of Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy uh, 35th anniversary is like a week later, like a little less a week later after the Game Awards. I would not be shocked if Square has a big showing of Final Fantasy games at the Game Awards. Like, I would not be shocked that Jeff Keighley would say, Square, if you really want to show this off, like, you know, if you're if you're okay with it, like, I want to do it because Jeff Keighley likes he likes all kinds of games, and Square's always had a big presence at the Game Awards with like Final Fantasy VII remake a trailer with like 2019. We had the Klaus Drive trailer. Uh, we have the Epic Games um, announcement for Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate at the Game Awards uh, last year. So, like, I would not be shocked if if Square does it again. Creative Business Unit One says yes. Final Fantasy XVI has their big live presentation. Why can't we show off something to celebrate to finish off this year strong? And I agree with Maximilian, dude. When he said this earlier, and I agree with him wholeheartedly that if you get like a, a just a little snippet, a little teaser at the 25th anniversary, and then you get a full blown trailer, that's gonna wow you. It's gonna like hit you. It's gonna be like whoa! Like I can see that happening. We're gonna get a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer. Creative Business Unit One is gonna say Yoshi P. Final Fantasy XVI is looking great. But we too have a major title that's coming out like six months after your title comes out or so. And we want to showcase what we've been working on. Because it's been, what, six months? Almost six months since we've seen it last. And what did Nomura say? He said the next time you guys see a trailer, it's going to have some of the answers that you see. You're going to see the direction to get num part two is going to go. And... He's happy. He was excited. He goes, I cannot wait to describe, like, to give you the meaning, the hidden meaning behind Remake and Rebirth. Like, he's so excited. And the third title. So, I can't, I can't see, I can't see them holding off and say, well, we're just going to wait until the 26th anniversary. We're just going to let 16 have his hurrah, right? They can do that. But I think Jeff Keighley, The Game Awards, All Eyes on Deck. Yeah, have millions of people watching. I'm gonna leave a um, 
I'm gonna leave it here with Final Fantasy 16. Okay. Final Fantasy 16 is gonna have um, my cameras and whatnot. Um, I had a little issue here. Uh, let's see. Anyways, camera's gone, but we'll just keep going. Um, anyways, I'm just gonna end it off here because I'm some technical difficulty. I think that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is gonna have a trailer, and I would not be shocked if it still said winter next winter of 2023. But we're gonna see some stuff in Rebirth. It's, it's gonna wow us. It's gonna like get his hype because. I know Creative Biz Unit 1, they love to, to show off their game. And I think after a, almost like a six month hiatus, I think that they will be showing this game off at the Game Awards. So with that said, that's all I got for you guys. Sorry for the technical difficulties, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful night. Keep on keeping on. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of Monster Hunter Rise coming to current consoles. Are you guys excited? Are you guys going to uh, check it out, play it? Um, I got it on PC, so I'm not buying it on console. Um, let me know what you guys think of Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core Reunion. Are you guys planning on picking it up? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Let me know your thoughts on Final Fantasy XVI about the live presentation that Yoshi P is going to be at the Game Awards. That's exciting times, guys. It's exciting time to be an RPG, JRPG fan. Um, let me know what you think is going to win Game of the Year. Let me know any category you want to see your favorite game win. Um, but that said, what's your, what's your surprises that you guys think is going to show up? Resident Evil 4 Remake, Silent Hill 2, Dead, Dead Space Remake, what do you think? We you think, we're, what's the biggest surprise we're going to get? So with that said, hope you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful night, keep on keeping on. I'll check you guys in the next video. Take care.